Hi, I'm Wanda from Alanda Craft and today I'm going to show you how to make these absolutely gorgeous checkerboard bags. So you can see just by using different fabrics the different effect that you can get. And on the back, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So let's get to it and make them. So what you're going to need for this bag are eight jelly roll strips or eight two and a half inch strips and you'll need one color as the main, the main color, and then some contrasting fabrics. Now in this case we're using the blue as our main and we've got four different contrasting fabrics. In this bag you can see we use the white as the main and we only had two contrasting pinks and that's the effect we got there. So it'll be interesting to see how this one turns out. Now you also need some backing fabric and we're going to use the same blue for our backing and our handles. You'll need some fusible fleece. I'm using Violene H640. You can use Violene H630. It's thinner. You can see the difference there between the two. But for this bag, I want it a little bit softer, so I'm going to use the uh, H640. Now the first thing we're going to do is lay our strips out so we've got them how we like them. And just remember to have one of your main fabrics in between each of your contrasting fabrics. Now cut off the salvages off each end, so both ends of your, your strip. And then we're going to go and we're going to sew them together. So we just put one on top of the other and sew it down with a quarter inch seam all the way down. And we're going to join all of these strips together. So I'll go and do that now and then I'll come back and show you what to do next. So I've sewn my pieces together and they look absolutely great. I'm really, really happy with the effect I'm getting. So now we're going to press the seams. I'll turn it over. I've actually given it a quick press, but here we go. So we just iron our seams so that they lay flat like this. Okay, so you can see how we've done it. And that's going to help us when we come to making our squares after. Now once you've finished ironing your piece, the next thing is to make sure that your edges are straight. I've already done that, but you just want to trim these short ends uh, just to get them nice and neat. So now I'm going to just open that up. And our next step is going to be to fold this in half. We're going to form a tube. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sew all the way down here with a quarter inch seam to make our tube. So now that we have our tube, what we need to do is we need to cut eight two and a half inch strips. So I've got my ruler on here, measuring the two and a half inches. And I'm going to cut, <coughs> cut along there. Right, and we need to do another seven of those because we want eight all together. Right, so now I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Now, just follow along with me. We're going to unpick this top row. And I'm going to come down and unpick this row. And then this row. This row. And down the bottom. Once I've done those, I'm going to come back for these last three and I'm going to start at the top again and unpick this row. This row. And this row. So I'm going to go and do that now then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So now I've unpicked all of those seams. So here, the second one down, third one down and so on just like I showed you. And now I'm going to open them up. So here we go. As you can see I'm already getting a checkerboard effect. Now when I get to here you'll notice that I have two coloured uh, squares the same, so I'm just going to flip those so that I have a different colour. Same with that one. Same with that one. Okay, so now I'm going to sew them together. Now your sewing will be perfect, so you know these are all going to match, but if you wish, you can pin them. That's why we sewed our seams flat, so that you can actually get in there and and they will match up and pin them through there. So I'm going to sew those together with a quarter inch seam. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're sewing is make sure that the seams on the top and the bottom are laying as we iron them. So don't let them hook up. Alright, so we want to keep them nice and that way you'll keep your, your joins perfect. Okay, so I've sewn the pieces all together and given them a good press so you can see that here. Right, so on here I've just pressed all the, the seam lines one way on those long seams. 
Okay, it's looking great. Well, we're finished with this piece for the moment, so I'll put it aside because I want to work on the back now. Now, I've still got this piece here in a tube, so I need to unpick one of the seams. So I've decided that I want to have one of the blue pieces at the bottom of my backing, and I'll start with one of the coloured pieces. So I'm going to unpick the seam that runs along here, and that'll open this up and make it uh, just one backing piece. So I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so I've unpicked that seam, and as you can see now, I have my backing piece. Now, you can you have a choice to make now. You can have your stripes running horizontally, as I have in this bag here, or you can have them run vertically. So the choice is yours. Either way looks great. So now you need to decide how big you want your bag, whether you want to trim it down. I'm going to leave mine the same size as it's turned out, which is 16 and a quarter by 16 and a quarter. And I'm going to cut my backing piece to be exactly the same. Okay, so the next step is to cut out, out our um, fusible fleece or batting, whatever it is you're going to use. I have fusible fleece here. Now, if you haven't used fusible fleece before, you'll notice that this side is very rough and that's the side that the glue is on. The other side is lovely and soft. Now, you need to make sure that the glue side goes against the wrong side of your bag. So, okay, I have my fusible fleece with my glue side up and I'm just going to place my bag pieces, one on the front and one on the back, just on top. And when I iron, iron without steam to make sure and, and have it nice and hot to glue onto your backing piece. And you also want to do the same thing with the front piece. So again, the glue side up, so that's the rough side, lay your piece on it and we'll go and we'll iron those onto there. And then our next step will be to sew the bag together. So now I have my fusible fleece attached to my bag pieces. You can see here, I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to sew around three sides and I'm going to come all the way down here. I'm going to pivot at the corner, a quarter of an inch from the bottom and go to the next corner and pivot and go up here. I'm going to leave the bag open at the top and I'm also going to make sure that I back stitch at the top ends. Okay, so I've sewn my bag together and I'm just going to put it aside because there's still something we have to do to this piece. But now I'm going to prepare my lining. So I've cut two pieces of lining. Now they're 16 and a quarter inches wide. So the same width as our bag, but I've cut them 16 and three quarter inches long. Now the reason for that is I'm going to create this little trim that we've done on this one. So if you don't want the trim, then you'll just cut your pieces 16 and a quarter by 16 and a quarter, or whatever size your bag is. Now I'm going to sew using a back stitch, and I'm going to sew around three sides. I'm going to pivot at the corner, come around here, pivot again, and sew up here. Again, I'm going to leave the opening not sewn. Okay, so now I have both my bag and my lining sewn together. And there we are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and box the corners. So I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so now we're going to do our box corners. So I'm going to take my hand, lay it flat, and just pop it inside the bag along the seam line. Okay, now I want to just feel for both those seams, the one along the bottom of the bag and the one up the side. And I just want to bring those together. Now the first thing I want to do is to measure down an inch and a half. Now I'm using an inch and a half because I want my box corner to be three inches. So if you wanted a four inch base uh, box corner, you would go two inches down, but I'm doing three. So I'm just going to measure an inch and a half. Now I'm just taking the inch and a half measurement from the bottom of the V. Okay, so I'll just show you that. So from the bottom of that V, so where that stitching finishes, that's where I'm going to measure down from. So, okay, so we've got our inch and a half, which is there. And I'm just going to draw a line. Now I'm using a friction pen, which uh, means it will come out when I iron it. Uh, you can use uh, any water-soluble pen. It's just you don't want to mark your, your fabrics with uh, a ballpoint. Now, before I go any further, I need to make sure that these two seams line up, otherwise they're going to look hor horrible when you finish. So I get a pin, and I'm just going to go through the seam line. I want to go through the stitching, and I want it to come out the other side. And this can be the tricky bit, because I want it to come out 
and through the seam line on the other side and you can see that's where it is now. Alright, now I'm going to just bring that pin straight up again through the stitching. Okay, so we're on the seam line still. We want it to come through the stitching. Alright, and through to this other side. I'll just push that down and I'll do a quick check to make sure that that's going to line up because we want it to look nice and even on the outside. And look at that, that's going to, to be pretty spot on. So then what we'll do is we're going to sew along that line and when we're satisfied that it all lines up nicely, then we'll cut the excess fabric off at a quarter of an inch. But we don't cut anything till we're happy with our seams lining up. Now I'm going to do that same process on each of these corners. So both your line, both on your main piece and also on the corners of the lining pieces. So I'll go and do that and then I'll come back and show you. So I've boxed the corners on all four corners, on both my main piece and my lining piece. And I'm really happy. I'll have a look, just turn it through. Now the idea is to get our bottom seam and our side seam even, and that looks pretty good to me. So now I'll turn it back through and I'm going to just snip off all of this excess. So to about a quarter of an inch, just chop it off. Okay, and I'm going to do that on all four corners. So now we need to make our handles. Now we're going to cut our strips of fabric 5 inches wide and our handles are going to be 22 inches in length so we need to add a quarter of an inch seam to each end of the length so we cut our fabric at 22 and a half so that's 5, in, five inches wide and 22 and a half inches long. Now if you're cutting your handles at say 18 remember to add on the quarter of an inch for your seam allowance so you'll have 18 and a half inches. So that's all you really need to remember. The finished size plus your quarter of an inch seams. Now you also need to cut some fusible fleece. And we're going to cut that at two and a half inches wide by the length of your handle. So my two pieces here are 22 and a half. So the first step in making our handles is to fold the piece in half. So we're going to do the same process with each handle. Fold it in half and give it a good press. And then open it up and I'm going to press to fold the outside edges into that line that I've just created down the middle. I'm going to press it as well. Okay, nice crisp finish. Bring this one in. And again just press it down. Okay. Now I'm going to open that up. I'm going to take my piece of interfacing and I'm going to lay it down the middle. Okay, so and I'm going to fold these outside edges in to the middle. I'm going to press this as I go. Okay, so I want my interfacing to stick. It's uh, fusible fleece that I'm using. Okay. So now once I've done that, I'm going to fold that in half again and give it another good press. Right, now, once that's done, I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to sew, in, sew down the edge here, top stitch it down this side and then I'm going to top stitch up the other side. So I've done my handles, I've top stitched them down on both sides and now I'm going to position them on my bag. So I just find the side seam and I'm going to measure in 4 inches from the side, side seam and place a mark and I'll do the same on this side. And the same on the back so I'm going to do that there. Now I take one handle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it with the with one side 
next to that mark and I'm just going to pin it. I want it to the, I don't know how you'd quite say this, to the outside of the mark I guess. So with the bulk of, the, of it going back towards the seam. Okay, and let's bring it round. Lay that one there. Next to the mark and pin it. Make sure by pulling it up that it's actually positioned right and not twisted. And I'll do that with the other handle on this side. So now I have my handles pinned on both sides as you can see and now I'm going to leave my bag right side out but I have my lining inside out and I'm going to place my bag into my lining with right sides together so the lining in the bag will have right sides together. Now I need to make sure that my handles are laying down towards the bottom of the bag. If you have them out here you're going to get them caught so just need to make sure that they're lying back flat. Now, the first thing to do is to match up your side seams. I'll just pin this roughly for the moment, but you're going to take a lot more time, of course, to do this. So we pin the side seams, and then we're going to pin it all the way around. But before we do anything further, we're going to make sure that we leave an opening of about five to six inches here to turn our bag through. So i just put a couple of pins in there because I know where to stop and start. And we'll go and we'll sew this around now with a quarter inch seam. I'm going to sew all the way around from one pin to the other. Okay, so I've sewn around the top with a quarter inch seam. I've backstitched at the beginning and the end where my opening is. Okay, so I've just done a little backstitch there. And then whenever I've come to my handles, I've just backstitched back over them as well, just to give them a little bit more stability. So now I'm going to turn the bag through. I'll just reach in here and start turning it. Alright, so now we're going to add the finishing touch. So you remember back when we were cutting our lining, we told you to make it a half an inch higher than the, uh, than the bag itself. So the reason for that was to create this trim. So you can now either eyeball this and press it, because we are going to top stitch on both sides, or you can measure it with your ruler and pin it. So whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, so you can see here I've ironed it down, and this was my opening to bring my bag through, so I've just folded that over to make that nice and neat. Now I'm going to sew, making sure that you bring your handles forward, I'm going to sew close to the seam line there, probably about a sixteenth of an inch, I'm going to top stitch around, and also over here I'm going to do about a sixteenth of an inch around here, you can do a sixteenth or an eighth, it's, it's entirely up to you. So I'll go and do that now, and then I'll come back and show you the finished bag. So there we are, our bag is finished, I've top stitched around here, and I've top stitched around the top, catching in the handles nicely. You can see the inside lining is beautifully finished as well. So there you are. Doesn't that look just gorgeous? So if you like this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. It certainly helps us. And stay tuned for more great tutorials.